by the way, if you notice, Hillary's also done the other thing you have to do at the formative stage of a campaign. She's going around, she's sucked up all of the money that's out there. So anybody tries to run against her, I hear people ask me, what do you think about Biden? I don't think about anybody. What are they going to run against her with? They have already laid claim to the money. Once uh, the American public begins to see the emails, uh, they will have an unprecedented insight into uh, a high government official's uh, daily communications, which I think will be uh, quite uh, interesting. You may have seen that I recently launched a Snapchat account. Those messages disappear all by themselves. You see, when Hillary gets in office within six months, According to the plan we wrote back in 1986, literally there's a plan called the 86 plan, and it's where we finalized and put everything down. Within six months, she will make Bill ambassador to the UN. When Bill gets to be ambassador to the UN, it won't be six months then because of the Clinton Foundation, what they've used the Clinton Foundation for, it won't be six months until he's made Secretary General of the UN. Now, can you imagine the power Bill and Hillary have? I mean, they will have achieved more power than any couple in the history of the world when they pull that stunt. On January 20th, 1993, William Jefferson Clinton became the 42nd President of the United States. At the time, most Americans were not aware of the extent of Clinton's criminal background, nor were they aware of the media blackout, which kept this information from the public. As State Attorney General and later Governor, Bill Clinton in 12 years achieved absolute control over the political, legal, and financial systems of Arkansas. As president, he would attempt to do the same with the nation by bringing members of his inner circle with him to Washington. The hijacking of America was underway, and its impact on future generations would be incalculable. It was years, years ago when uh, I was picked up by a man named Mr. Witt Stevens. And Mr. Witt was the brother to Jack Stevens, Jackson Stevens. And they were the kingmakers in Arkansas. So they called me one day and said, we need to meet with you. And I met with them and they said, we need you uh, to take a look, see, at a guy that we think we can make governor and we want him to be the youngest governor in the history of the country so i agreed and then uh, that's when i met bill when i met with him it was kind of weird because i was talking to him and he was chasing after the waitresses and uh, I would try to get his focus, and all he would do is just chase after the waitress, just watch, man, I want some of that, man, I want some of that, and it just went on and on and on. And finally to the point where I had actually gotten a little bit perturbed about it and said, man, this, you know, we gotta figure this out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was attorney general at the time, and so I went back the next day to Mr. Witt and told him what I thought. I said, Mr. Witt, this guy is, is a sexual predator. He's not just a womanizer. I mean, I'm telling you, this guy's sick. And uh, he's a pathological liar. I mean, and I told Mr. Witt I couldn't even make him tell the truth. And when it came to something he could tell the truth on that would be harmless to him, he still couldn't tell him. Well, Mr. Witt said, you can break him, break him of that. We'll, we'll have a talk. So I figured, what the heck. A couple, three weeks passed. 
<coughs> they met with Bill. Apparently, they got everything worked out the way they wanted it. And he was in the game running for governor. Tonight, I ask all of you who have stood with me. I ask my opponents and those who have fought with them in their hard-fought campaign. I ask those who have believed in me and those who have doubted to join with me in common purpose. Let us put aside our fears for our hopes. Let us trust each other and work to forge a future that will enrich the lives of our people, a future that will strengthen our traditions and our faith, a future that will make us proud that in our time we gave our best. God bless you all and thank you very much. No, they didn't tell me anything about it. They didn't say anything to me about it. The airport in question, uh, a matter for federal jurisdiction, state really had next to nothing to do with it. We had nothing, zero, to do with it. And everybody who's ever looked into it knows that. Your president, the president of the United States, not only was a part of the system that was laundering millions of cocaine dollars, your president signed off on it. He can't deny that he did. You see, because of that, there's one little catch. Every loan that ADPA made, Bill Clinton himself had to sign off on it. More than Bill Clinton. You better identify the people in the loop of the drug running. You better identify the people in the loop for money laundering. And what you'll find there is those people go straight to Washington. Act 1062, if you look at it, it says that ADPA was developed and created to provide low-interest bond loans for churches, schools, colleges. So now look what happened to our legislature. They voted on a bill creating ADPA, thinking that they were getting money to colleges and schools to buy books and so forth. What better way to run thousands of tens of millions of dollars, launder it, clean it up, and use the cover of a state agency to do it. When Oliver North, Poindexter, and those guys got KO'd, knocked out of the box because of Iran-Contra, I was asked to come down and help, and I did. I had to cut loose from there. It, it got bad. And there was something happened with a little girl and her mother that I don't want to go over but it fried my brain and it was time to quit. My family said that why didn't I get in touch with my buddy Bill Clinton and get a job with the state and get out of that racket. I called Bill and uh, Bill said, you bet, we've got a place for you. And he brought me on <clears throat> to this agency called the Arkansas Development Finance Authority. Now, as much as I had had involvement with state government, I had never heard of that agency. And I was surprised to find out that its mission statement was that it would make low interest bond loans to churches, schools, libraries, which was kind of odd because it also made loans to industry. Well, the problem with that was we already had an Arkansas Industrial Development Commission and it was duplicating the work. What I found after about a couple of weeks of being there is it was strictly there for Friends of Bill. We didn't loan money to churches. We didn't make low interest bond loans to schools. We made low interest bond loans to Friends of Bill. Jennifer Flowers, in a tabloid interview for which she was paid, says she carried on a long-term affair with Governor Clinton from the late 1970s through the end of 1989. Are you prepared tonight to say that you've never had an extramarital affair? I'm not prepared tonight to say that any married couple should ever discuss that with anyone but themselves. Paul Paul Towers is the... Uh place where Jennifer Flowers had an apartment. Anybody in power in Arkansas knew Bill with his girlfriends and all that, but nobody would dare talk about it. 
I filed a lawsuit, and I brought them out. I named them. One of the women was Jennifer Flowers. Well, as was the day, Clintons controlled the media here. They wouldn't touch anything. I had a big press conference on the steps of the Capitol. All the media in the state was there. I walked all the way down the hall. They got it. They videoed me walking to the hall. Go to Bill's office, throw the lawsuit across his desk. Pretty dramatic, I might say. Nobody covered it. Nobody. Eventually, every allegation stemming from Nichols' 1990 lawsuit and press conference would prove valid regarding Clinton's sexual liaisons, his drug usage, and his criminal activities relating to ADFA and Whitewater. Gradually, the women who had carried on adulterous affairs with Clinton began to emerge. Betsy Wright, Clinton's former chief of staff, admitted she had been hired to conduct media smear campaigns against anyone planning to tell the truth about the governor's sexual habits. She was prepared to go after at least 26 women who had the potential of destroying Clinton's chance at the presidency. During the 1992 presidential campaign, uh, I was getting bludgeoned by the media because Jennifer Flowers had come out of my lawsuit. A man called me on the phone on a Monday. His name was Gary Johnson. He was an attorney. He told me that he felt bad because I was being bludgeoned and he wanted to talk to me about handling my case. Well, I was craving an attorney, any attorney to help me. You know, I saw Larry out there doing battle, so to speak, on his own, and I felt like he needed some help. I met him on a Tuesday. He was a special attorney. I didn't even know it. You see, he lived next door to Jennifer Flowers. He told me that he had bought a bicycle and there was a lot of theft in and up and down the halls of, of the apartment complex. So he put a camera so he could watch his bicycle. Well, guess what he caught on camera? He caught Bill Clinton going in and out of Jennifer's apartment with a key. Well, so he knew I was telling the truth about the woman. I was, he certainly knew I was telling the truth about Jennifer. So I said, great. I said, you, you can get on board, but I warned him. I said, Gary, you got to be careful. He said, oh, I, nothing's going to happen to me. I'm not scared of him. There was a Friday that we were supposed to meet, and I called. He didn't answer. Well, I called his office all day. He didn't answer. His office hadn't heard from him. That Saturday, we went to his apartment <clears throat> and found him. He had been bludgeoned, he had been beat horribly, and he had literally been left for dead. What was significant about the beating he took, the licks that he took were specific. For example, they hit him in just such a way, military hand-to-hand -hand, hit him in such a way that they ruptured his spleen. They did all kinds of things that would kill you. We found him, got him to the hospital. He made it. But to this day, to my knowledge, he's still just half insane. It scared him so bad that uh, for a while, I don't know if he still is, but for a while, he literally was in a mental institution. It, it scared him so bad. So that's the importance of Quapaw Towers. That's where it all began. Now what's the story nobody really knows? You know, guys, when Bill Clinton was in that first race, when I did Jennifer Flowers, Bill was running like seventh or eighth. I mean, he couldn't get any traction whatsoever. When Jennifer's story broke, in all the frenzy about that, he jumped up to number two. So in a way, my trying to get him backfired in my face. And instead of getting him, I elevated him. And the rest is history. Now, remember, I got him to number two. But because of all of the womanizing stuff, the people started doing what they're going to do for Hillary. You see, they're playing this right. Hillary's not saying anything about it. She's letting her numbers go down because if you're going